What's up guys, welcome back to some more Atlas news, and as you can see, well, that is a lighthouse on a pillar, <laughs> but it's actually the new control point, the new sea forts, uh, as part of the new trading mechanics. Before we get into it, like I said in a previous video, um, going over the recent captain's log and the patch notes for this big patch that's just been released now, um, or it would have been a few days ago before this video. I'm going to break down each section of the new update into a video so that it's easier to digest and easier to talk about. And um, yeah, because otherwise it's going to be way too long when I've done the captain's log and patch notes video going into each thing because there was so much stuff which has got a lot of interesting things going on with it. So let's get into it. So the sea forts and trading are now in the game and this is the new control point and um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I've already heard a lot of criticism saying it's kind of lazy for how long they've had to work on this, but um, like they said in the captain's log, all this stuff is subject to change and this is the first iteration of these things. So yeah, it's kind of just a marker a holding image or whatever you would call it um, this hopefully isn't the final outcome of it but yeah sea forts in trading let's read through this little update and then we'll talk about what it can mean for the game sea forts in trading earlier this week one of the major items we discussed was the upcoming trade system a lot of you are curious about the towers on the island control points now called sea forts would look like Trade routes won't be available yet in this next patch, but you will be able to at least check out these sea forts and battle it out. Here's an early sneak peek. Please note that the above reflects a work in progress. The sea fort tower structures are still undergoing some work and adjustments will be made in subsequent updates. We have received a few questions as well about how the actual exchange of goods happens and how trade can be disrupted. When shipments for trade are generated, both parties will only receive the goods and generated gold if both trading ships successfully make it to other market. On PvP, a shipment will not start if all forts on a grid that is part of the trade ship's route have blocked it from usage. Once a shipment starts, it will follow its intended path and pay taxes based on the conditions of its route at inception. Blockading will only stop new shipments or force it into another route if it's not completely blocked. Trade ships can also be attacked directly and although players will be able to steal resources from the trade ship, this functionality is still a work in progress. We've seen concerns about how these trade ships may affect server load, optimization and server stability are ongoing issues that involve the continual work we are doing to update the backend code. Improvements are going to be gradual process, however we do have a mechanic in place to prevent an overload of trade ships. Once generated trade ships have reached a certain threshold, any shipments that should have been generated thereafter will be virtual. Virtual shipments do not generate a trade ship and cannot be attacked or stopped once it has met the conditions to start. This is very interesting and um, I've seen someone mention a possible exploit for this. Ships. We also discussed the upcoming ships for gold system. At this time, the plan is to have it exist alongside the current ship system. The next patch will see a few changes to ships to balance it out with the changes that the trade system and ships of gold system will bring. Maximum level has been increased to 60 for ships and the XP curve has been adjusted accordingly. Schooner, Brigantine and Galleon will now additionally cost gold to build and this amount increase once the trade system has been fully implemented. The new ship salesman has also settled into the free ports so you can pay him a visit although no ships will be available for purchase yet. Wipes. Many players were also concerned upon hearing about more wipes. This doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be suddenly wipes left and right. Only that instead of hesitating to wipe or wait until a new season, we will perform the wipe if a situation calls for it. However, it does mean that a wipe can happen at any time, but only when necessary. We're going to do our best to minimise the possibility, but the possibility is always there. We'll announce wipes when we're sure, 
Although how much of a heads up we can give is going to depend on the situation. Understandably, many of you were also anticipating a wipe after hearing this news. The next patch will not include a wipe, however as we continue to implement the trade system, a wipe will be necessary part of the process. We do not have a date for this yet and will make an announcement once we do. We apologise for this inconvenience and thank you for your understanding. For our Pathfinder sailing the seas on private servers, we will also let private server owners know if we recommend to follow suit when we announce a wipe. In addition to the pieces we were setting in place for the trade system and ships for gold, are a few changes and bug fixes as well. We'd also like to remind everyone that we are indeed working on bug fixes and other issues in tandem with the new content. Some patches may see more content and other patches may see more tweaks and fixes. While certain patches may focus more in an area other than that, it does not mean that we are not working on other things. We are a small team doing our best to balance all sides and we appreciate all your support and understanding we continue to shape Atlas gameplay. If you want to see the patch notes, it's in a previous video, I'll put a link to it down below in the description. But let's get back to the point of this video, sea forts and trading. Now first of all, I want to talk about a massive exploit that someone pointed out on Discord recently that um, revolves around this part. We do have a mechanic in place to prevent an overload of trade ships. Once generated trade ships have reached a certain threshold, any shipments that should have been generated thereafter will be virtual. Virtual shipments do not generate a trade ship and cannot be attacked or stopped once it has met its conditions to start. So the exploit that might be possible um, and is a massive problem is that you could just make a load of shipments for like one wood if that's how this is going to work. Like you could make a load of small shipments that you don't care about once you've met the threshold then send your actual trade ship as a virtual trade ship that wouldn't be able to be intercepted, wouldn't be able to be lost, and would mean that you would make your trade successfully in PvP. That's not good. <laughs> so I don't know whether they have a workaround for that. I don't know whether that's something they've already considered, but that is a massive problem. And someone pointed that out straight away before this was even released just when we was talking about um how this is going to work um so it's crazy um i hope they've thought of it already and it's not going to be that simple but it is possible that it is going to be that simple and there's already an exploit so the sea forts um it's a cool idea like i said in the previous video i said this has given me quite a few ideas of what the future could hold for this and for me, the main one is, now I know a lot of PvP players are going to take the piss, but whatever. Um, I love PvP. I can't play it. I don't have time. I don't care what anyone says. I don't have time. Um, I'm, away, I'm away for work. I come home. I'm trying to make content, video streams. I can't just keep restarting over and over again. Um, I could join a big company, yes. But um, I just don't have that in. I don't have that uh, possibility right now. And I don't have time to get into it. So there you go. There's my why I don't do PvP. I do love PvP. I love the aspects of it on Atlas. But there you go. But what I think would be awesome is a PvPve type server. Um, in addition to the PvE servers and the PvP servers. Or maybe make it a new direction for PvE. I know not a lot of PvE players wouldn't like that. But um, I think it would be pretty cool. Um, but... If not, I would like to see a PvPvE server as a standalone server, much like Conan Conflict. What I mean by that is, you could make it so bases are not attackable, you can't destroy buildings that are on claimed islands, for example, or on lawless islands. Um, but you would be able to engage in ship-to-ship -ship combat and player-to-player -player combat. This would mean you could lose tames, of course. Um, but it would add some fun to the game. That is the kind of stuff I would like. I like PvP. I don't like losing everything I've been building and working on. Um, like I said, it costs me personally too much time. If I wasn't doing uh, content creating, I wasn't streaming, I didn't work away from home, I wouldn't mind so much. But um, yeah, I think it'd be cool as well with that that you would be able to implement 
the PvP aspect of the trading system in that way. Um, so even if everything else was PvE, maybe you could um, go to one of these control points and much like a battleground on World of Warcraft or something along them lines, you could join a queue for the PvP for that trade route and you could follow that ship and other people that have joined it could engage you and try and raid that ship or something along them lines. I think that would be really fun. But like I said, if you just had a PvPVE server, you could have um, these as part of it and this would be part of the PvP condition. You could fight over control points, fight over the trading. It would be a really good, fun way of playing in my opinion. Conan Exiles have it and the conflict servers, which I think are kind of popular. It's something I've been looking at recently. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Atlas could do it as well. I think they could implement something along them lines. So obviously as well, they've already changed the name of the control points to sea forts, which is kind of cool, but maybe they should have made this look more like a fort. <laughs> maybe have some outer walls and a keep. You've got to fight through walls, get into the keep or something, aren't they? Um, but yeah, so they've changed that already. So how is this going to work then? So the way I'm interpreting this is... Interpreting? Yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> the way I've t taken this is that you're going to attach your market to your warehouse and you're going to attach your farmhouses to your warehouse. Uh, farmhouses are going to generate resources to go into the warehouse. The market's going to pull stuff out of the warehouse that you'll be able to set prices on and trade with other players. And when you have resources and someone else has the gold, they'll be able to purchase the resources. And if the trade route isn't blocked in any way, a sh trade ship will be generated and make its journey to the destination of your uh, customer. If it makes it, the trade will be successful. If not, um, I guess you both lose whatever it was you were trading. So if you sold 10K metal to someone and um, it got lost on the way, you would lose the 10K metal and the customer would lose whatever the gold price was. Um, and on its way round, each control point would generate tax based on the cargo. And that would be in that tax bank, which people would be able to raid and take money. If you control the tax bank, uh, i.e. the sea fort, you would then earn that gold for your company. That is how I take it. It's going to work. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to add items to your market, blueprints to your market, maps to your market. If not, I think that should be something that gets implemented. Um, because otherwise, the current trade system that people use, i.e. Discord and player stores, obviously, um, are better than this. And it would be easier and safer and more profitable to just carry on how we've been doing it anyway in the community. Uh, especially in PvE. Um, like I said, I don't play PvP, so I don't know how it is, but I do know there's trade communities, trade discords and stuff like we have on PvE. Um, but I know on PvE, it's a massive part of the gameplay. And obviously people trade resources, they trade ships, they trade animals, they trade blueprints, they trade maps, they trade items. Um, so yeah, if that's not gonna be part of the marketplace, kind of makes you wonder whether it'll even be worth the hassle to be honest other than of course it's a new part of gameplay and additional fun for the game so it'll be interesting to see like i said whether they do implement that later on um or maybe you'll be able to add your player store to the market maybe you can connect your player store in some way to your market and people can see each store show up in the marketplace and obviously there's concern with the trade ships affecting the performance, optimization of the servers. We've already been having a lot of issues with that recently with the servers in general. And like they mentioned here, it's a back-end problem, which is what all developers always say. It's a back-end code problem. It's going to take time to sort it out, which I guess it does. I know nothing about programming, but that's always the um, go-to answer when optimization and performance issues crop up. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Hopefully they are getting on top of that and hopefully they really are working on the back end issues um, behind the scenes and um, yeah, improving the performance of the servers. Um, I've personally noticed it being better recently, but I think that's due to the fact that loads of people have stopped playing and loads of things have despawned. So it's less um, 
less um, pressure on the servers. There's less load on the servers, so that's probably why it's been slightly better recently. But yeah, like people have said, it's going to be interesting to see how the servers cope with the additional trade routes, additional ships sailing around, and all the other mechanics that are now going to be part of this trade system. But there you go, guys. There's a little bit of um, an insight into the, the new sea forts and trading system, a few of my thoughts and a few ideas that I think we could see um, or that I would like to see. Um, again, there'll be another few videos following this on the other stuff, the ships of gold, etc. And a few other thoughts in the process. And I think this is how I'm going to do each new update and patch from now on. Um, just to make the video shorter, make it more digestible, easier to talk about each individual thing. So there you go. There's the sea forts and trading. Let me know what you think down below. Any ideas you've got, what you would like to see with it, how it's going to work in your opinion. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it ring the bell subscribe all that goodness if you ring the bell you won't miss the next video regarding these updates which will probably be a little bit of a video on the ships of gold system um, and also my live streams i'm doing a lot of live streams recently but because of my shift patterns i can't have a schedule so if you ring the little bell you won't miss them you can follow me on twitch if you'd rather watch streams on twitch moshman gaming on there um, but yeah thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it hope it was informative i'll see you in the next one